Welcome to the review of the March 2020 ACCA Computer-Based Strategic Business Reporting Exam, the SBR exam. My name is Tom Clendon and I'm from Kaplan and an expert tutor specialising in helping students pass the SBR exam. In this video, I'm going to quickly review the March 2020 exam and then delve into question two in a bit more detail. In this way, I can then show you how to go about planning your answer and applying your knowledge to that type of question in order to maximize the number of marks you can earn when you come to take this examination. SBR is a three hour, 15 minute exam for 100 marks containing two sections, four questions, all of which are compulsory. Question one of every exam will test your knowledge of group accounts. For example, in the March 2020 exam, part A required you to apply your knowledge as to how the functional currency of a subsidiary company is determined in a given situation. Part B required a calculation of goodwill of an overseas subsidiary, both at acquisition date and after an impairment. A brief explanation of the impact of impairment and exchange differences was also required. And part B was just for six marks. And in this exam, these were the only marks available for numbers relating to group accounts. Part C required an explanation of the accounting treatment of 100% equity interest that met the requirements for reporting as held for sale under IFRS 5. And Part D tested IFRS 9 financial instruments, in particular financial assets, and required a calculation and discussion of the impairment of bonds over two years, with a deteriorating credit risk between the years. This part was not well answered. So just reviewing question one shows the importance of being well prepared for the exam by studying the breadth of the syllabus and being able to discuss and apply the standards. Question two of every SBR exam will examine the ethical aspects of accounting and require you to demonstrate an understanding of the professional and moral judgments that accountants must make in practice. We're going to look at this question in more detail later in the video. Turning our attention to section B and first question three. This question was based around a football club, putting the accounting problems in the context of a real business situation. An interesting exercise. It enabled the examining team to test the application of a diverse range of standards from intangibles, health for sale, impairment, revenue recognition, leases. And future exam questions may well adopt a similar approach in using a particular industry or business as a context, as a backdrop, if you like, to test a variety of accounting standards in a very practical way. And finally, question four of the March 2020 SBR exam looked at issues from a stakeholder perspective, how investors consider matters. And it focused on sustainability and environmental issues, dividing this area between the importance of sustainable information and the accounting treatment and management responses to issues around pensions and provisions. But let's turn our attention now to a more detailed examination of question two, the ethics question. Please note that in discussing the answer to this question, I will be showing you how to plan and structure the answer. Please also refer to the published answer and examiner's reports. So this is what the question looks like. You've got some initial information here about Bagshot, about its profits being disappointing, about the key personnel and about the exhibits. And there's two exhibits, a group restructure and some information about Mrs. Shaw. But to be honest, the first thing I really want to do is look at the requirements. 
because when I know what the requirements are, I can read the information accordingly and then go back and have a little bit more detailed information about the requirements. So here are the requirements. What are we being asked to do? This is for 20 marks. So this is effectively in an exam for 36 minutes. And this is a high level overview of this question. So I would encourage you to pause. I would encourage you to look at this question a little bit more slowly, a little bit more detailed. I'm giving you a structure. I'm giving you a review of this question too, this ethics question, the themes of which are recurring in every exam. So what are the requirements here for part A, A part one? Discuss the appropriate accounting treatment of restructuring costs. And that for me highlights, I say 37, six marks. Are we applying this standard correctly? A part two wants us to talk about good stewardship. All right. Talk about accountability when we have other people's resources. And that's for four marks. A part three is about the acquisition of shares. So Mrs. Shaw has bought some shares. And is this to be disclosed as a related party transaction? OK, so there's lots of different things we're being asked to do. Now, the classic in part B is to identify and discuss the ethical issues that are arising very much in a practical situation and what actions should be taken. And of course, what really matters is that we're thinking about this from the point of view of an individual. So we're going to give them very specific advice, Mr. Shaw. So I've got now, as I review the information, an understanding that it's about restructuring revisions, about stewardship, about related party transactions from the point of view of Mrs. Shaw and the ethical issues that relate to Mr. Shaw and what actions he should be taking. So this informs my ability to read the information in the question. So let's have a look at our, our first exhibit. And you can see there that I've highlighted some words already that that Mr. Shaw is not a member of the board of directors, that we're talking about a potential restructure with relocation costs that should be included. And I would urge you to think about pausing the video, looking at this in a little bit more detail. Um, the second requirement or the second exhibit uh, refers much more to Mrs. Shaw uh, and therefore this is to do with a part three and the related party transaction and we can see there that Mrs. Shaw is a wife of Mr. Shaw. Now to be honest this is to be dealt with in more detail when I come to get to that part of the question. So I've skim read the requirements, I've read the exhibits, I'm itchy to get on with planning the answer. And one thing that I would recommend that you do always is to cut and paste the whole of the requirements yeah, into your response option. So we've got here in the word processor response option, the ability just to cut and paste. Now you can see there that we've lost a little bit of the formatting. So the first thing I would do is just to spend a moment getting that reformatting. Now, I am thinking, I am thinking about a part one, and this is for six marks about the restructuring. And for me, it is about identifying the fact that we're going to be applying ISA 37 in this situation. So if I think about my answer plan, it's about the application of the standard. It's not about regurgitating the definition of the standard, and it's about coming up with a conclusion. So let me think about the sort of things that I'm going to be saying. So looking at my application, um, what have I said? Well, if we're going to recognize a provision, then all three conditions, constituents, yeah, you can always make a little minor change there if you want to uh, set out and stand. It must be met. I don't have to say it's ISA 37. There are no marks for remembering the name of the standard. All right. The number of the standard. But you do need to apply it. And, and so you can see there I've talked about the obligation. 
I've talked there about the probability. Now, the third one is reliable measure. Do you know what? I just don't think that turns me on in this particular context because it's not controversial. There's not information around there. So I've talked about the application. That's my little heading. All right. And I can make that bold. And what's my other heading? My other heading is then a conclusion. And therefore, I'm going to conclude that we shouldn't be providing. But hang on here. This was worth six marks. I am writing in short, simple paragraphs, trying to earn one mark each. I don't feel I have earned sufficient marks. I am therefore going to have to reflect and think what extra I can write about. Phew. And there you go. Two additional points made. OK, so I now feel more confident that I'm hitting the number of points that the marks warrant. Please read the examiner's answer as well. It is going to be more detailed than what I am providing you. I'm providing you what I think is a really good answer, but it's not as perfect as the examiner's answer. I'm trying to be realistic, though. So the next part of the question. Yeah, what have we got coming up here? Discuss what is meant by good stewardship. So that gives me an idea that I need to write and define what is meant by good stewardship. And whether the restructure is an example of good stewardship and whether the recognition is an example of uh, good stewardship. So I've got my little I've got my little answer plan. I've got my little structure. Yeah, from the information in the question. Good stewardship is about accountability. It's about that relationship when you are looking after someone else's resources. Have you done the right thing with them? And the classic example is the directors are looking after the resources of the shareholders. Now, you can see that I need to apply this. Is the restructuring an example of good stewardship? Is the recognition of the provision an example of good stewardship? Well, the first thing I might want to do is re-edit that word restructuring. And look, you can see how I've applied the concepts to the information in the question. We are making losses, so it's a good thing that the management are restructuring. That is good stewardship, trying to change things. But they're going about it in the accounting sense in the wrong way because you shouldn't be making a provision in these circumstances. So that bit is not good stewardship. You can create these inter sentences. You can develop this to be worth four marks. So a part three here. Yeah, we're discussing whether Mrs. Shaw's acquisition of the equity shares in Bagshot should be disclosed as a related party transaction. So how am I going to plan to earn those three marks? Well, this is what I would be doing. What is a related party transaction? I think that has to be defined. All right. But we've got to be really careful that we don't just do an abstract answer. We've got to apply it to the information in the question. And then as a throwaway, almost, there's a conclusion to be had. Related party transactions, it's partly about key management, close family members included, all right? And it's partly about having control or significant influence. And what you might want to do is to remind yourselves by reading the information in the question, yeah, about exactly what the relationships are. And Mrs. Shaw is the wife of Mr. Shaw, but Mr. Shaw was not a director. And that the number of shares that we're buying or the number of shares that Mrs. Shaw is buying is 5%. And therefore, this application of knowledge is absolutely crucial. So my plan here can be rustled up into proper sentences. That's what you would do in the exam. Read the examiner's answer for a more considered, mature, complete answer. But effectively, the conclusion is that it's not a related party transaction. 5% doesn't give you any influence. And the position of the husband, Mr. Shaw, does not appear to be one where they are a member of the key management. Now, the final requirement here 
is the classic recurring ethical issues in an applied context. We've got to identify and discuss the ethical issues that Mr. Shaw needs to consider and what actions we suggest they take. Now, if we answer this properly, in a considered way, in a mature way, bringing everything together, we are going to earn those two professional marks. So how are we going to go about planning our answer? Our answer is in two parts. What's the ethical issue and what's the action? What is the ethical issue? You need to read the question again. The ethical issue for me is not about regurgitating the five ethical pillars, but it's identifying the practical situation. And Mr. Shaw is effectively an insider. He knows about the restructuring and his wife is a shareholder. He knows about the restructuring and his nephew is about to lose their job potentially. So the ethical issue here is all about confidentiality. Look, there's my plan. The ethical issue, yeah, it's about the investor. It's about the employee being related. But as an ACC member, they're bound by the ethical code. Information that we get in the course of our duties, we should not be getting an unfair advantage from or, or, or profiting from that situation. So the action we take is none. But hang on a minute. I don't think I finished because there were ethical issues here and we've only identified one. I think there is another ethical issue that we need to talk about. So the second ethical issue here is about the potential error. There's two qualified accountants here and Mr. Shaw is being put in a situation where he's being asked by his boss to do something which is actually technically incorrect, which relates to the relocation costs being included in the provision. And competence is a key ethical pillar. OK, now what action should Mr. Shaw take? Well, be polite, stand his ground. Yeah, argue the case professionally. Now, that should resolve it. If he doesn't, he needs to take advice. As an absolute last resort, he needs to think about resigning. But I repeat, that's an absolute last resort in this case. All right. So this has been my high level overview of question two within the March 2020 exam. Here are some reflections and feedback from the examining team. As you've seen in this video, by planning your answer, you will be able to maximize your marks through the use of a structured layout, including headings. And please note that you need more than just mere knowledge of accounting standards and ethics to pass this exam. You'll need to also apply your knowledge. But look, it's heartening to note that you may be awarded marks for discussion of issues which do not appear in the suggested solution but are relevant to the scenario and that extra marks may be gained if you discuss a point particularly well. This after all is a final level professional examination and is expert marked. Good luck in your exam preparation. Thank you for watching.